Hi, this is Ryan, and I'm going to be talking about this Clearview 2.0 that I just got. Uh, so I just picked this up yesterday, and uh, overall, I've been pretty happy with it so far. So far, I've been able to dive into the menu system uh, to see what things have changed um, from Clearview 1.0, as well as I've got uh, one, one flight in so far on the unit. Um, so the basically, the purpose of this video is to talk about what's different between the Clearview 1.0, like the original Clearview Racer and Clearview Pro, and then uh, what's like similar compared to the Clearview Goggle module as far as the menu system, and then what other things you guys could expect if you were, were going to be looking into getting one of these or upgrading. Um, so first off, the, the size is different, uh, so the, the this new unit is a lot smaller. I've got my same tripod block on there, you can get these at uh, Iftron 2. Um, they're nice machined aluminum. Uh, but other than that, unit is very small, so it still has the antennas coming out the side, the, but the case is smaller. Um, next up, it's got a smaller power jack right here. Uh, so this is just a little DC barrel jack. Just overall smaller smaller stuff. Sorry about that. Um, it has it does have two audio outputs that are the same, so both of those are really like full clear view performance out. And that's really good for ground station if you want to have a DVR and goggles, or just two people watching. Um, I've got the Strix Hoot antennas on here. I'm really a fan of these antennas because they're pretty bendy um, and they get pretty excellent performance. Um, next up, new on the Clearview 2.0 is the OLED. This is probably my favorite part right now of the unit, um, aside from the actual video performance, because uh, the OLED allows you to see your band channel number, your frequency, and also the battery voltage. Um, I did test the battery voltage yesterday, and it's like within like 2 or 3% at all the voltages I tested on my precision power supply. Uh, so this is, if you if you buy one of these, it makes a really good LiPo checker, especially if you put like an XT60 on it over here. Um, and you can sort of plug in any battery. Uh, yeah, so it, it does take a 2S to 6S. So for, uh, that's really nice uh, because you can basically use any, any battery you have sitting around to power the unit. Um, they all work equally well. Uh, so it's got a scroll wheel um, that's different from any of the other modules um, or ground stations and the scroll wheel uh, does have a really nice tactile response so it, it sort of clicks every click you, every scroll wheel you make and you can also push it in to select so like I can hold to long select and then the OLED will actually update and say that you're in the video menu. Um, one of the unique features about the Clearview 2.0 over any of the other receivers is that you can quickly go in and change your um, channel and band just by using the OLED. So you can put it on like race six, and then there you go. And you can also change your band if you go all the way to the end. Um, and then you can click and select your band. And there you go. Um, adjust your channel again if you want, and then you're done. Um, so overall, pretty good user interface there. Definitely helps out when you're at you know, when you're at a race and you don't have the time to put on the goggles or dive into the menu system. You can just quickly dial up a new frequency right there. Uh, the unit does use this little adapter board for future proofing updates, and I'm using that to actually do some uh, communication with it. Um, so uh, it's just a little adapter, and you can either use a Type Two or Type One future proofing cable. Um, anyways, that's sort of all I'd like to cover for the unit right now. Um, I'm going to go out and do some more video testing, but overall, you can definitely tell in uh, RF performance, the new uh, 7dB that they added for sensitivity is just killer. Um, I hardly get any video noise anymore um, in like when there's nothing in the way, uh, even flying a little further away. And then when you go behind things, you just get less static. So overall, the, the video performance does uh, seem to have improved a lot from the original Clearview. Like now I'm able to fly across my street, um, across to the golf course and then behind some trees, uh, sort of by the tee off area. I've never been able to even get close there um, and I'm not even using directional antennas. So I'm pretty excited to just set this up on a longer range bird, um, use a directional antenna. They also added some new algorithms for the antenna processing, which helps give it that extra sensitivity. But one of the things they, they focused on was asymmetric antenna performance. So that's when you have like a patch and then an omni, which a lot of people like to run. That sort of antenna situation gives you better coverage area, um, but it's really challenging for these uh, 
higher performance modules to be able to select the right antenna. Uh, so their new algorithms are supposedly helping with that. And I, I personally fly asymmetric antennas a lot. So that's one thing I'm really looking forward to testing. So anyways, let me know if you guys want any testing in specific. Uh, sorry I don't have uh, any super fancy like GoPro and goggle recordings yet or anything, but if there's enough interest, I'll definitely be able to work something out um, and get you some really accurate video. I noticed already that the DVR doesn't do, do it justice, uh, so I'll try to do my best with that, but just be patient as far as like DVR shows jumpiness, but the Clearview doesn't actually do that. I haven't noticed any screen tearing or jumping since I started flying it. So um, I'll try to find a screen or something to record with in the future. But for now, I'll be able to post some DVR, just initial thoughts, and, and for you guys to get an idea about what 7dB is going to look like compared to a Clearview Pro, for example. So hope you, hopefully you guys look forward to those videos. Let me know if you need anything else for um, product questions or things like that. And if I don't know the answer, I'll definitely reach out to the IFTRON team and see if they can help me out. Thanks again.